بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين Towards the end of the last session we noticed that Imam Zain al-Abidin عليه السلام admits that he is calling Allah with a tongue that is unable to express the ideas and that is only because of the heavy burden of the sins. Here there is one very important question that is we believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in Lady Fatima alayhi salam in the 12 error-free Imams that they are infallible, they are error-free, they are sinless. So how can we justify this type of phrases where the Imam talks about the sins? Even in the Quran when we read that in Surah Al-Fatih, for example, "Inna fatahna laka fatahan mubina, liyaghfir laka Allah ma taqaddam min dhambik wa ma taakhir." Many people say that the Prophet, the last messenger of Allah, and the Imams are ordinary people. They may commit sin, but the true aqida, the true faith of the Shiites is that these 14 personalities are immune against the sin and disobedience. So why is it that in some texts, in some ayat, in some ahadith, in some du'as, we find some sort of clear mention about the sin? To answer this question, we have two methods. The first is the only way to achieve closeness, obtain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to feel insignificant, to be humble, to forget about any merit to forget about any arrogance. In other words, when a person, a servant, feels really, genuinely, that he is nothing but the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can do nothing the servant has to feel that and feel that it is only the grace of Allah, the tawfiq of Allah SWT, which enables him to do anything good. In other words, the person when prostrates and minimizes his height in the position of prostration sajda, he puts his forehead, which is the most honorable part of his body, on earth and refuses to feel any sort of height. So he comes to the lowest possible way in humility, in humiliation, and in forgetting about any height, at the same time, the word, the remembrance, the dhikr, which he mentions and utters, he says that, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdi. Glorified is my Lord, who is 
the highest. So having said that, we understand that whatever the Imams speak about disobedience or sin, they consider any minute which they don't concentrate on remembrance of Allah SWT, or they feel this worldly life which make them busy and divert them from concentrating on Allah's existence, Allah's presence, they consider that sin. They consider that something which shouldn't happen. This is one method. The second method is, to answer this question, is that the deeper your knowledge, the deeper of your piety and righteousness, the greater your humbleness will be. So let's go back to the dua of Abu Hamza Thimali or the dua of Imam Zain al Abidin السلام, when the narrator is Abu Hamza Thimali and he tells us how the fourth Imam was dealing with this type of confession. إذا رأيت مولاي ذنوبي فزعت وإذا رأيت كرمك طمعت O my Lord, when I look at my sins, I became frustrated. I started, I start to worry. But when I look at your generosity, I become greedy in a sense that I wish more and expect more forgiveness and pardon from you. Now, there are two situations. Either you pardon me or you punish me. فَإِنْ عَفَوْتَ فَخَيْرُ رَاحِمْ If you pardon me, you are the best and the most merciful. But وَإِنْ عَذَّبْتَ فَغَيْرُ ظَالِمْ If you punish me, punish me for whatever I did, it is not injustice. You are not unjust. حُجَّتِي يَا اللَّهِ فِي جُرْأَتِي عَلَى مَسْأَلَتِكَ مَعَ إِتْيَانِي مَا تَكْرَهْ جُودُكَ وَكَرَمُكَ وَاللَّهِ My argument in asking you and begging you, although I do things which do not please you, and this is very, very normal, that when you ask your father, your boss, someone who is superior to you, you ask him something, you shouldn't do something which causes reluctance or negative ideas about yourself. You shouldn't do something which displeases him. Here, we talk in the same way. We say that, although I do things which displease you. I do, for example, by riba, backbiting, slander. I am lazy and not active in doing good things. I don't spend much time on helping others and things like that. So all these displease Allah. So my argument in begging you, although I am doing things which displease you, juduka wa karamuk. Your generosity, your giving, your endless giving. وَعُدَّتِي فِي شِدَّتِي مَعَ قِلَّةِ حَيَائِي رَأْفَتُكَ وَرَحْمَتُكَ Your mercy, your kindness, your gentleness, and all these are things which give me more hope. وَقَدْ رَجَوْتُ أَلَّا تَخِيبَ بَيْنَ ذَيْنِي وَذَيْنِي مُنِيَتِي I hope that I get the best of results from you. 
while I am moving between two pairs. Then the Imam continues in confession. First of all, وَأَنَا يَا سَيِّدِي عَائِذٌ بِفَضْلِكْ هَارِبٌ مِنْكَ إِلَيْكْ In one hadith Qudsi, we read and hear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, O oh my servant, if you want to disobey me, leave my world, leave the earth which I created, leave the plan which I prepared for you and all these universes, leave them away, go somewhere else which is not within my sovereignty and then disobey me. Is it possible? Of course not. Why? Because who can run from Allah's sovereignty? Who can run from the universe, from the planet, from the world which is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There is no other places. So, it is not fair that you get the provision from Allah, use everything provided by Allah, and yet you disobey Him. يَا سَيِّدِي عَائِذٌ بِفَضْلِكْ هَارِبٌ مِنْكَ إِلَيْكَ If I run away, I run away from you. Not only to run away, but to come back to you. So, in the end, I have to come to you and to beg your mercy and your pardon. مُتَنَجِّزٌ مَا وَعَدْتَ مِنَ الصَّفْحِ عَمَّنْ أَحْسَنَ بِكَ غَنَّا Are we optimistic about Allah's pardon or pessimistic? There is a story mentioned in the book Minhaj al-Bara'a, which is commentary on Nahj al-Balagha, that one day the Prophet Isa alayhi salam met his cousin Yahya. They were almost the same age. And Yahya was always fearful, his eyes tearful, crying all the time, and acting as someone who never gets any hope in Allah's mercy. On the other hand, Isa alayhi salam was cheerful. He was optimistic. So Isa argues with his cousin Yahya. Oh, Yahya, how are you so pessimistic as if there is no way of hope at all? As there is no light in the end of tunnel at all. Yahya said to Isa, how can I see you cheerful that there is no way to punishment or chastisement as if you are guaranteed and secured and you don't fear any accountability? Then both they said that we need someone to bring us, that we need a revelation comes from us, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, comes to us to judge between these two opinions. So Jibreel alayhi salam came down with one word and said, your, la your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, says that those who are optimistic are closer to me. Those who are cheerful and think that I am going to pardon them and forgive their sins and I am going to govern them with the mercy or they have better understanding about my essence. So here we hear the same thing from the fourth Imam alayhi salam that مُتَنَجِّزٌ مَا وَعَدْتَ مِنَ الصَّفْحِ عَمَّنْ أَحْسَنَ بِكَ ظَنَّا You promised us that those who have the optimistic opinion 
about yourself, you will deal with the same and you will allow them to have this good opportunity and the good tidings. Then, وَمَا أَنَا يَا رَبِّي وَمَا خَطَرِي هَبْنِي بِفَضْلِكَ وَتَصَدَّقْ عَلَيَّ بِعَفْوِكَ Who am I? I am insignificant. I am like a feather in the storm. I am nothing. And this is the way that a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can feel the sincerity in his heart. It is impossible that a person feels arrogant and I am superior and this and that and at the same time wishes to have Allah's pleasure. No. Allah is pleased only when finds yourself, find a servant as humble as possible. وَمَا أَنَا يَا رَبِّي وَمَا خَطَرِي هَبْنِي بِفَضْلِكْ وَتَصَدَّقْ عَلَيَّ بِعَفْوِكْ Then it comes a very crucial time and a very serious confession. فَلَوْ اطَّلَعَ الْيَوْمَ عَلَىٰ ذَنْبِي غَيْرُكَ مَا فَعَلْتُهُ O oh Allah! Had it been that somebody else, not you, would be aware of my deeds, I would stop doing it. So what? Are you not taking Allah's omnipresence serious? Does it mean that when we commit any sin, we don't do it in front of other people because we fear the opposition or the argument or condemnation from them, but we do that although we know that Allah subhanahu wa is omnipresent, who is everywhere? وَلَوْ خِفْتُ تَعْجِيلَ الْعُقُوبَةِ لَجْتَنَبْتُهُ Had I been aware that you will punish me promptly, immediately after any evil act, I would have stopped it. لَا لِأَنَّكَ أَهْوَنُ الْنَاظِرِينَ It is not because I'm not taking you seriously. وَأَخَفُّ الْمُطَّلِعِينَ عَلَيْ you are easy comparing to other people. No. The only reason is that you conceal. You do not disclose. You are ghaffar them. You are satar al which means that you always want to cover up and do not allow the evil acts to be made public to others. Tastru dhamba bi karamik. You only do that as you are generous. Wa tuakhiru al-uqubata bi hilmik. And you postpone the punishment because of your forbearance. Falaka alhamdu ala hilmika ba'da ilmik. Oh Allah, I praise you for your forbearance after your knowledge وعلى عفوك بعد قدرتك and your pardon after being able to punish and to make me ashamed of whatever I do. In these words, what do we get? We got one thing and that is how the real servant of Allah. The one who is Sayyidu Sajideen, the master of prostrators, who is the Zainul Abideen, who is the jewelry of all worshippers, who is Zainul Abideen or Sayyidu Sajideen, who tell us, tells us about the real servanthood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by saying the real and genuine servanthood, we mean that you become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these nights of Ramadan to cover us 
with his mercy. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammadin wa ajjil farajahum. Labbayka, 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 ya.